I'm going to build one of the fastest gaming PCs in the world right now with incredible performance in a tiny form factor that gives you access to your entire Steam library from the comfort of your sofa with a system that looks great in your living room and also runs super quiet. Now, my current gaming PC is literally one of the largest that you can build in the world right now. It has some huge components. It's custom water-cooled. There's two PCs in one case. And the case itself is a super full tower, which makes it super impractical because it's heavy and also very big. So I guess now that we've built the world's largest PC, we're now going to try and build the world's smallest, you could say. So because this time I want to build a much smaller gaming PC, I've went out and found this awesome case called the Fractal Ridge. Just look at the size of it compared to a PS5. It isn't that much bigger. And when you consider that this case will be housing a full-size graphics card and obviously a really powerful CPU, it's going to be very fascinating to see how this compact mini PC sort of compares to a console. Because obviously at the heart of this new gaming PC is going to be an AMD CPU and an AMD GPU. And a fun fact that you may not know is that your PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X are both powered by AMD CPUs and also AMD GPUs. So we've kind of got like a weird shootout with our like console replacement PC and the real thing. Now for full transparency, AMD did provide me with the CPU to make this video and a small budget so I could purchase all of the other parts, which has been a huge help because these videos are incredibly expensive for me to make. But so I don't look like a complete YouTuber sellout, wait until the end of the video for a really cool surprise. So when it comes to the motherboard that I've chosen, I haven't gone for anything too crazy. It's just a standard B650 board. It's obviously got the brand new AM5 socket on there and it supports the latest and greatest DDR5 RAM. Now in particular, I went for this MSI board because it kept the cost of the build down. Now with the new AMD processors, they do support things like NVMe Gen 5, which are like crazy speed NVMe drives. And at this current time, there aren't too many NVMe Gen 5 drives readily available in the marketplace. So instead, I went for this board here that only supports Gen 4 NVMe SSDs, but that's all I'm going to use anyways. It keeps the cost down. It's only around 250 pounds, this board, and it's pretty cool. Now, one thing I love in particular about AMD motherboards is the fact that the CPU sockets are cross-compatible across multiple different CPUs within that generation lifespan. So for example, on my current gaming PC, that runs an AM4 chipset with the 5900X at the center and heart of that setup. And the cool thing about the AM4 socket set was that exact fact that you could literally purchase a de half decent motherboard, maybe have like a, a decent CPU in there on your first time build. And then a few years down the line, when AMD released some latest and greatest CPUs that were, were supported by that platform, you could just switch it out and you wouldn't need to upgrade your motherboard. And the same is true here but this time with AM5. So for the RAM sticks that we're going to be using, I've chosen to go for 32 gigabytes of RAM. These things only cost me around 100 quid. I got them for an absolute bargain. Now for the speeds that I've chosen, I went for 6,000 megahertz as from my research when I was looking at different benchmarks and so forth, apparently these are the best clock speed sticks to pair with the AM5 uh, chipset. Plus I've also gone for low profile RAM sticks because we need them to not impede with our CPU cooler and obviously not take too much space up inside of the ITX case. Now, something that kind of blows my mind about the 7800X3D is the fact that this is the faster CPU than the 7900X when it comes to gameplay. And that's because of the 3D V cache. Now, although this CPU has got less cores and threads compared to my 7900X, which I just recently put in a new editing system, this CPU is actually faster because of the 3D V cache when it comes to gameplay. You get more FPS in titles with this CPU. It's unbelievable. In previous years, I like to put a cross on my CPU, but because of the new shape of these Ryzen CPUs, you see how we've got this like chipset stuff exposed here? Just in case you put a little bit too much thermal paste on and it leaks out, I don't really want to get any thermal paste on these nice solder joints. So for this build, I'm actually going to do a dot. I've done loads of tests here on the channel that show the coverage is equal whether you do a cross or a dot, but at least with a dot, it's just a little bit more controlled and it isn't going to leak out too far. Building inside of the Fractal Ridge was a very pleasant experience. Considering how restrictive the space was, I usually find ITX builds to be very frustrating. However, for the very first time of building a small form factor PC like this one, I actually enjoyed the entire process. So for the graphics card, there's this weird little bracket that we sort of need to attach it into, and then it'll plug in with like a little extender cable, like a PCIe extender cable, into the motherboard. And then it's going to like lay 
flat, I believe, inside of the case, so obviously it all fits in and doesn't take up too much space. Now, for the graphics card that I've actually chosen, I've gone for the AMD 7900 XT. Now, originally, I was going to go for the 7900 XTX, which is like the insane, you know, top of the line one. Really, really good. But one, it's slightly smaller, so it'll fit into this case, just allow the airflow to be a little bit better. The XTX did fit into the case. This, I feel, just is a little bit more uh, natural, you could say. We're not cramming too much into such a tight knit area. In addition to this, I also got an insane deal on the 7900 XT. One, it was a B-Stock open box, so it had already a discount, and then it was also on sale, so I saved like about two, three hundred dollars, something like that, compared to going for the XTX version, so it was a no-brainer. Now, what I love in particular about these latest AMD graphics cards are the form factors. So you get an incredibly powerful GPU in what you would argue is like a, like a 2016, 2017 style size for the actual GPU itself, because modern day GPUs, especially the NVIDIA ones, are huge, absolutely huge. You can't fit them into uh, ITX builds, at least none of the more flagship ones where you want that more 1440p gameplay performance, whereas the XT and XTX give you that flagship performance, but in like a form factor that fits in like any case you sort of want. Before installing the graphics card, I did need to take a moment to do all of the cable management. This also included connecting the various cables and fan headers into the motherboard, which was quite the challenge due to how restrictive the space was, but with a little bit of persistence, we were up and running. However, routing all of the power cables was surprisingly very simple and easy. I expected to have way too much excess cable length and not be able to fit it into the case when we would obviously put the doors on it. But thankfully, this problem didn't prevail. Before we move on to throwing the graphics card in, I'm gonna go get some food because I'm absolutely starving and then we'll finish this PC. So the PC is now complete, but before we go ahead and put the covers back on, just check out how clean it is. This case was incredible to build in. Our graphics card fits without any issue. It's got fantastic airflow because of these two huge fans over here. Our main PC over here has got no issues whatsoever in terms of clearance. So the CPU fans got nothing impeding it. RAM sticks, beautiful. Motherboard looks great. And then here, we've got this great channel where we've ran all of the cables into the power supply. And this was a large concern of mine. I thought the extra lengths of cables would have been really difficult to route in the case, but no issues at all. And just a few finishing touches to make sure that this power cable doesn't get caught in our CPU fan. I've routed it up here through the little cable tie points nice and neatly. And then I've also done the same for the GPU. So to make sure that our two PCIe cables don't get caught in our fans, they're routed down the side here with the provided uh, Velcro straps. I think what we've managed to achieve here is mightily impressive. Just look at it compared to a PS5. There is so much performance jam-packed into such a tiny space with hardly any compromises because these are some of the greatest and fastest PC parts that you can currently buy right now. And I don't know about you, but I cannot wait to see how this thing performs. So let's throw it in my car and take it home. I think you'd be pretty surprised by the overall performance of this PC. The FPS it could generate was unbelievable. I tried a huge range of different games from like Assassin's Creed to Cyberpunk and put them on like the max graphic settings to really push this thing to its limits. First, let's take a look at Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now I put this game on very high for all of the settings and I first tried it without FSR because I wanted to see the raw performance of the graphics card. Now with very high graphic settings, we managed to get around 143 FPS, which was amazing at 1440p as well. But things got even crazy when I turned on FSR and I went for the quality preset just so the graphics still looked really good and now I was getting around 190 to 203 frames per second which was just mind-blowing. The next game that I wanted to try was probably the hardest one on this list which was Cyberpunk 2077. Again I went ahead and put this on a pretty high graphic settings but for this title I did only go for ray tracing ultra instead of like ray tracing insane because I think that might have been a step too far. On my first test I had FSR enabled in quality mode and we were getting around 78 FPS which I was pretty happy with. And just like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, these tests were performed in 1440p. And then with FSR turned off, we were getting around 40 FPS without it. So a huge performance increase with FSR enabled of around 28 frames per second. And the overall latency still felt fantastic. I think this was because of the combination of the AMD CPU and also the AMD GPU working really well together. Now the game with probably the biggest FPS numbers was Uncharted 4. Now in Ultra, with everything cranked up to the max, without FSR, this game was hitting a solid 100 
172 to 180 frames per second. But when I enabled FSR in quality mode again, this title was exceeding 240 frames per second and looked amazing. Another Sony title that did particularly well without FSR or any assists was Spider-Man. This was hitting around 96 FPS to 123 FPS without any FSR, just literally cranked up to the max and was awesome to play. And then for our final game, another difficult one, Hogwarts Legacy. So I decided to run this game at Ultra at 1440p and also made sure that ray tracing was turned on. Without any FSR, this was running at a solid 55 FPS and sometimes exceeding 60 FPS. I was pretty happy with it overall. But then with FSR enabled in quality mode, it was hitting a dead steady 91 FPS, sometimes peaking over 104 depending on the environments. So from those numbers, you can see that this PC is pretty capable for gaming, but your biggest question is probably temperatures in this tiny case. And after a few hours of playing and testing all of these games, also while screen recording, don't forget that while we were capturing the footage for the video, and straight after that intense session, the overall ambient temperature of the case was around 71, 72 degrees, and the individual components were as follows. The CPU was around 81 degrees, and the graphics card was at a pretty cool 67 degrees. I think those numbers aren't too bad considering how restrictive the airflow is in this ITX build. Now, as promised, the surprise is that I'll be giving away an AMD 7600X gaming CPU. This is a fantastic processor for sort of like a mid-range gaming setup, because I believe if I am going to be working with larger brands that I absolutely love, my audience has to benefit some way from me having that relationship. And one lucky winner will get their hands on this brand new gaming CPU, and all you have to do is literally be subscribed to the channel and fill out the form in the description down below in order to enter. Now this giveaway isn't at all associated with AMD. I purchased the processor myself, I just felt like this video provided the great opportunity for me finally to do something like this for you guys. If you want to learn more about the AMD 7000 series, I'll leave a link down below in the video description. But if you want to see me build the world's largest gaming PC, you should check out this video next.